Nagorno-Karabakh, a region reclaimed by Azerbaijan, scars from the recent conflict are still visible. Since its victory, Ilham Aliyev's authoritarian regime has conducted many press trips. In the distance is Stepanakert, now known as Khan Kendi, and former capital of Nagorno-Karabakh. 50,000 Armenian inhabitants deserted immediately after defeat. A city immobilized, which journalists have not been permitted to enter for the time being. According to our sources, no civilian casualties have been reported so far. This footage, filmed a few days ago by the Red Cross, is among very little footage to have been filmed in the former enclave. Since the end of the conflict, the NGO has carried out almost 1,000 evacuations. With winter approaching, the Red Cross is now heading for the remote countryside. Like this man, a few Armenians who are attached to their land will remain no matter what. The Azeri regime was willing to show us, however, the items it seized during the war. In a perfectly orchestrated production, we were encouraged to film the weapons, confiscated from the Armenian enemy. Even more surprisingly, our guides take us to see fields of cannabis. According to the press officer accompanying us, these plantations were one of the income sources for the self-proclaimed Republic of Armenian Karabakh. Propaganda or reality? It's impossible to verify. But here in Khojali, a deep wound remains on the Azerbaijani side. Armenian fighters massacred hundreds of Azeri civilians here in 1992. Even the youngest know this story. On the way back, we're not allowed to stop. All we see are personal belongings left behind by Armenian civilians in haste and their looted shops. A five-hour drive away is Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. In the city, which has grown prosperous thanks to gas and oil from the Caspian Sea, there are no traces of the recent conflict. Inhabitants proudly display their patriotism from their windows. It's a different story, far from the city center. This is the Garadak district. In these Soviet-era dormitory buildings, one family is preparing to leave for Karabakh. During the region's first war, the Abbasov family were forced to flee their home as Armenian forces advanced in 1993. A family of refugees, like 800,000 other Azerbaijanis. Kalmıştım belə. 
Yemeğimizi, içmeğimizi, hatta çölde yağış yağında ip çekip paltarımızı böyle burada kurudurduk. Yani bütün palazımızı, gebemizi, her şeyimizi burada yürüdük, her şey burada olur. Burada yani yeme pişirin de, sen götür, ben koyun, sen benim yerime niye gir? Yok, kadın kişinin hepsi bir yerdedir, yani növbeyle çıkıyor. Bunlarla bu bahisinde onlar yoktu. Hardansa uzaklardan su taşıyıp, burada vanlarda su yokluyup, kuruş kaynan için verilir. Yani bunların hamısı sonradan olurdu. Yani şerahat edip, sonra da suza çekilir. Ve buranı kızdırmak için. A few days earlier, the Abbasov family lost one of their sons in Nagorno-Karabakh during an anti-terrorist operation, as the authorities are calling it. Grandmother Tahire is still in mourning. Those close to her come to offer their condolences. The young man was 19 years old and is one of the 200 victims that have been counted in each camp. The next day, we traveled to Fuzili in Lower Karabakh. The city foreshadows the regime's plans for the newly conquered lands. Taken back by the Armenians in 2020, the city is now booming. In less than two years, an international airport, new schools and modern buildings have all sprung up. Having left this exact location 30 years ago, the Abbasov family is now returning to this barely completed home. <laughs> The family is overjoyed to return to the region after 30 years of exile. So far, 800 people like the Abbasovs have been offered new housing by the state. A further 2,200 are expected to join by the end of the year. This forced repopulation policy is not without its problems. As we were about to interview the representative of the presidency, he was besieged by questions from the new town's inhabitants. Ha, kısaca, iki tane restoran, iki tane kofi şov, 
Bunlar hamı saçlıyor. Böyle yalanın bizi bura ne? Tökülürler. Değil yanlış yalan kimi tökülür o? Bir şey olmur o. Bir ev olur. Böyle getir bura tökülmeyle de. Canlar, yaşlı adamlar. Sıraf vurma. Hasta adamlar. Eme geçirilir üstüne naboy vururlar. Kendicim üstüne naboy vururlar. Biz Xüsusun Umayindarlığın emektaşları olarak Bugün gördüğümüz kimi e, bunlar gelmiştiler bura ki bizi tanıyırlar, görürler ve bilirler ki artık bize müraciət olunan da biz hemişe daimi kömek edirik. Fuzuli still has to find its feet to move beyond its status as a showcase for the government. But for Rachid Abbasov, returning is a victory in itself. Şadam ki bize granis koyulacak, daimi bizim granisimiz olacak, şümenlerimizle bizim aramızda, bizim bu... Yeniden yetme, yeni yetmeler hamısı e, arkayı yaşayacaklar. Böyle yerleştik, işte, müharibə olmayacak, hiç ola da bilmez. Ne kadar bizim prezidentimiz var, müharibə tutardı. A victory for Azerbaijan. But the war in the region has left its mark for many years to come. Landmine accidents occur almost every week. Despite the ceasefire agreements, Armenia is said to have delivered erroneous maps to Azerbaijanis. Over the past three years, around 100 people have been killed and several hundred wounded. Each day, many mines are unearthed and neutralized. To make it clear there is no going back, President Ilham Aliyev recently trampled on the flag of the Armenian Republic of Karabakh. He then hoisted the Azerbaijani flag throughout the region. Has Baku finished its territorial conquests? The government insists it has. But the latest military exercises carried out with Turkey are sowing doubt, particularly among Armenians.